Time a 17 game winning streak. Juan Dixon, only one of four from the floor. Maryland is up eight. 3.30 to go in the first half. Carolina has cut it in half. They're down four. Jason Capel from the corner. Got some arc on a shot today. It's 43-42 at the break. Second half, Maryland is down 52-46. Terrence Morris, disappointing 12 points. Four of 11 from the field. Maryland down three. And now the football players make an impact. Ronald Curry, strong to the hole. Four points and eight assists. Carolina up five, and how about Julius Peppers? What a force. Yeah, Julius Peppers, 12 points in the first half, but the second half finishes with 18. It was Peppers and Haywood inside the second half. It was Capel and company coming down the floor, making things happen in transition. And yes, not just in transition, but also Capel finding the big three when they needed it. This is why they're so tough. They can go inside, they can go outside. The big three by Capel, they blow it out. No question about that. We saw all aspects of this Carolina team. 96-82, the final score. Capel was big. That's a career high. Peppers had a career high. And Forte with just terrific balance. This is a very dangerous team that we all know about. I was really scared about this game because uh, I know Coach Williams is such a competitor. And that after their uh, way they played against Georgia Tech, how upset he was that he was going to come back and play extremely hard. And I thought, you know, I talked to our team that we have to play harder. And I don't know if we did in the first half or not. I think both teams played very hard. Um, but uh, I thought our execution was pretty darn good. Well, their execution was terrific. You see Tony Harris sat out for the sprained ankle. Not sure when he's going to return. And Ole Miss try to take advantage early, Digger. They love to hit the threes. The shots were there. Tennessee did not do a good job of guarding and finding open people. Mississippi hit the big threes. Ole Miss rolling by 13. Aaron Harper just drains a couple. Jason Harris in the steal. Feet of the head. Harper this time in close. They're up 14. They're up 18 at the half. And Tony Harris knows without his ankle, their penetration somewhat cut down. Slade will beat his man here. He's the only guy that gets it tough. No one else picked up the game for them inside except for Slade. Balls within nine. Harper, long three. Five and nine from deep. You see that defense sloughing off big time, and when you go to help, that happens. Big time, big loss, and five straight road losses for Tennessee in the SEC. Ole Miss a winner, 87 to 71. The final score here. Yarbrough gave you 16 and eight. However, a disappointing loss, and again they're now two and five in their last seven games. And Digger pointed out their troubles on the road. Arkansas and Florida. Now this was a war, big time. Brandon Dean, shot clock winds down. He's got to fire it up, and it goes. That was his only bucket. We're tied at 55. Brett Nelson. How important is this guy to this club? You gotta love Brett Nelson, but for one reason, Teddy Dubay back in that lineup after that injury. Nelson's been open for threes all day, makes them when they count. This was a war, but yet it was his three-point shooting that got Florida this win. A couple of good passes from Dupay to set him up. Nelson was five of eight from downtown. He had 19 points. Dupay ends up with four assists. Florida a winner by 10, 73-63. Brett White comes back too, starts his first game off that foot surgery. He gives him 14 points and 10 boards. You see Arkansas 5-5 five and five in the conference now, 14 wins overall. But they started out in the conference 0-3, so they're still hot, winning five of their last seven. Let's continue on. Mississippi State, Kentucky, the dance team helped out with a marriage proposal. It's getting near Valentine's Day, and Katie's answer to Sam, touchdown. Second half, Wildcats <laughs> are up by two touchdowns. Gerald Fitch, Tayshawn Prince, whammo. He had 18 in the game on 8-10 shooting. Kentucky's up by 16. More Fitch. Bogan's had eight. Kentucky's by 20. Yeah, good assist. Good ball moving by Kentucky in transition. Their defense was good. Bulldogs didn't shoot well at all. 0 for 19 from three-point range. They shoot 27% from the field. And Kentucky wins it by a final score of 76 to 57. Love Jason Parker. Points in the paint in the first half. Big 10. They go in that 14 to run in the half. They never look back against Mississippi State. Well, he continues to get a little more comfortable inside that game. Georgia and Alabama. This one goes the way of the Crimson Tide. 76-68. Jim brought up that story because Katie got a tee 72 seconds into the game. Digger still holds the record. Off the inbound. Corey Bradford. Boom. 88 straight with a three. He had two in the game. He had eight points in Illinois. He's up 46-38. Brian Cook had a real good game. So did the whole team. Yeah, Brian Cook was the game this week when you look at what he did this weekend. Inside, outside, real consistency. And don't forget, Purdue did not have Rodney Smith, John Allison. So this was big. Cook getting a steal, coming in transition. We talk about Bradford hitting the threes. It was Cook's day today after Bradford nailed Michigan State with six threes. Frank Williams week. there to finish. He had eight steals. Demir Krupalia with the steal. He'll go all the way for the dunk. He had seven. Gene Cady is not happy. The Illini, thanks to their tenacious defense and the fact that, as Digger pointed out, no Smith, no Allison. The Illini win it by a final score of 82 to 61. 
You talk about Mackey Arena. Purdue has lost there. They're hardly embarrassed. They rarely lose like this. In fact, this is the worst loss in 34 years at Mackey Arena. And the Illini snap a nine-game losing streak against the Boilermakers. Back to the Big East. Seton Hall and Syracuse. The scene on ESPN. First half, the Hall is up three. Damone Brown had a huge night rebounding, but Eddie Griffin stole that one. He had 18 points and 10 boards. Seton Hall is up five at the half. Things got real tight in the second half. Deshaun Williams, Jeremy McNeil, throw down. This is on that 12 to 2 run when Syracuse came from eight down. Darius Lane, though, he calls back. No, he didn't call back. That's a 6 3 of the game. Hall was 11 of 32 from deep. They took 32 threes. Alan Griffin had a terrible night shooting and still makes it when it counts. Didn't score the first 25 minutes of the game, but hit the shot to win the game because the shot gets blocked. Who blocks it? Damone Brown, who had 15 points, 16 rebounds, a huge block. Player of the game, Damone Brown, 63-62. He's Michael Bradley, who's an absolute force. Could be a lottery pick in the NBA. Great move inside. He had 16. Nova's up one. This isn't good for Villanova. Jermaine Medley. So vulnerable, has his ankle rolled by UConn's Karan Butler. He would suffer a knee injury, sit out the rest of the game, and that may be huge because they get a big week coming up, including a game Monday on ESPN against Georgetown. Gary Buchanan, 21 big points. Nova's up six. Then Nova up 10. The story of the second half was this guy, Andreas Block. Banks it. Wow. Four threes in 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes of the game. 74 60. They pull away. Albert Mooring, six points for UConn. Credit the box and one. He had 12 in the first game, and now only six today. Can't handle, can't handle that box and one. You don't win. Georgetown, Providence. John Linehan in transition looking for Kareem Shabazz. Providence would put up an unbelievable number against Georgetown. This is the Hoyas in their defense. This is a Hoya club that has been playing better than any team in the Big East. Providence, a Big East record, not only with threes, but with transition. They put 61 on the Hoyas in the first half. Just blew them right on out. You just didn't say, I can't believe that. When I heard that, I thought that was a final score. Providence got those three placards out. This was Rick Pitino's time here. Shabazz had 22 points and 11 rebounds. John Le through the legs, Linehan. Providence puts 100 on Georgetown. First team in the Big East to do that. They win at 103. 79. There are your two most impressive performances of the week. Providence out of the Big East with a 103-79 win over Georgetown. And Boston College stepped up big. They win 83-59 over Virginia Tech. Had an impressive win against the Cuse and did what they had to do. So and Xavier. Lynn Greer was huge for Temple. Has to be huge, otherwise they're really gonna produce very little. He led all scorers with 30. Temple, though, trailing at the half. Second half, Xavier by three. Romain Sato launches a three. Xavier's up six. He had 19 points in the game. Later in the second, Xavier up by a dozen. Mo McAfee behind the back. This is pretty. Xavier up by 14. We talked about the lack of depth for Temple all season long, and John Chaney has caught up with him. Xavier a winner, 78 to 71. The final score here is Caffey didn't have only just the 12 points. He also dished the ball for 12 assists. Well, Temple just lives and dies with the threes, and they don't have the inside attack. Xavier coming off that loss in Philly this week to St. Joe. I still think St. Joe, Xavier are two best teams, so we'll see what happens when we look at the A-10 tournament. St. Joe's won this game, two free throws at the end to win it against St. Bonaventure. So from that standpoint, maybe UMass and Temple have to win the A-10 tournament to go to the big dance. Otherwise, you may just see two A-10 teams go at all. All right, let's move along. Cincinnati, Southern Miss, first half in this one. Cincinnati's up 13. Kenny Satterfield breaking a man down. Baseline for the hoop. Conference USA not nearly as strong as it's been in the past. Cincinnati's up 15. Southern Miss is Brad Richardson on the drive. Little guy goes in against some trees. Pretty move like that. A Lavoie to block. Southern Miss down 13 at the half, though. Cincinnati pulls away. Satterfield and Logan. That was the show. Logan at 19. Cincinnati a winner, 64-52. When they play, Cincinnati wins. When they're inconsistent, they lose. Now, when you look at this win tonight, Cincinnati, to me, at an RPI of 35, the only power team in the RPI, because Southern Miss is at 67. All the other teams in Conference USA are in the 70s. This is in three games at least, he's going to miss with a bad wrist. Luke Axdale, Kirk Heinrich lays it up, lays it in. He had 20, 6 of 8 to start the game. Jayhawks by 7. Second half, all Kansas. Heinrich and the big fella Eric Chenoweth work in a little two-man game. Chenoweth tough in the paint tonight. 17 points, 12 rebounds. They need that if they're going to get a shot at the final four. Kansas by 5, under 5 to go. They're up 9. Nick Collison takes the goal. Nasty slam and the foul. Kansas by 11. They go on to win 77 
to 61. Digger mentioned Chenoweth with a huge game. Heinrich leads everybody with 20. Cowboys didn't score a field goal in a final 7-22. Back end of the double dip on ESPN, Oklahoma and Texas. Jameel Haywood, the perimeter, dishes to Nolan Johnson. Pretty off the window. Sooners lead is 15. This was a waxing. Hollis Price, Aaron McGee, turnaround, short jumper in the paint. It falls. He had 12. More from Johnson. A little crossover. Maurice Evans. See you. Spin in the lane. Turnaround, Jay. At that point, you just want to say, you know what, let's end it now. Sooners are up 19. J.R. Raymond has been a big player for them. They've won seven in a row. He's gotten them just about 20 in each of those, and he helps again. Sooners win. They end a Texas 25-game home winning streak. Johnson ends up with 23 points. We move along. Wake Forest, Florida State. FSU's top scorer is Monty Cummings. He's out with a flu. Well, you couldn't tell. Maybe if we missed some classes with the flu laugh. Darius Sungaila tips the ball, and that's a battling on the boards. He'd convert. They're up 10 at the half. Second half, Knowles come back. One thing about the Knowles, they'll stick around games. A 10-0 FSU run, Knowles down five. Josh Howard playing heads up ball. Josh Howard has been the only consistent thing you've seen in Wake's offense the past seven, 10 games. He's the one that makes things happen, gets a loose ball, rebound, gets it back, gets it back out, and then Sets up the three. They're up six. Younger fans, okay, the future's bright here. 71-65. First ACC road win of the year for Wake. Doesn't mean anything because they lost seven out of the last ten games before this game. Wake Forest is still not a solid team. How about O'Kelly coming off the bench with 15 points for the Demon Deacons? We move back now out west, UCLA. Interconference. Look at Dickie. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Dickie and Brent sitting in a tree. Lance Williams, double team. Andre Brown's open. UCLA lead is seven. From there, the Bruins go on a huge run. Jason Capone, transition three, up and down. He was the guy against Southern Cal the other night with the big 20 points, getting it done the second half. And here he is, Billy Knight again. Had 22 against Stanford, hits two big threes back to back. UCLA just too much for the Demons. This is a dangerous club. They go on to win at 94-88. They peak, it seems, in the second halves of these seasons. And Capono gives you 28-11 boards. He was very effective from the outside, hitting five of six from deep. Cal, Oregon, first half, time running down. Shante Leggins, Ryan Foran Kelly, buzzer beater. Bingo, Cal down four at the half. Second half, Sean Lampley gets the ball. Look out, baseline's open. Help is late. 32-30, Cal. Under two minutes to go in the half. Cal's up five. Lampley this time. This is just muscle. Big muscle. Get out of my way. Pit, pulls it right inside. 65-56. Lampley goes for 17 in this one, and Cal is a winner over Oregon. Cal, since December 5th, is now 16-3 on their way to an NCAA bid. Oregon's fading out, losing eight of their last ten. Disappointing for Oregon. Elsewhere, Stanford is a winner, 82-63. Casey Jacobson with 18 points for Michigan State and Minnesota. And Minnesota played them tough at home. Michigan State struggles. Big bomb from the outside. The Gophers had a play without Michael Bauer and J.B. Bickerstaff. They're both gone. Bickerstaff for the season, but then the inside play a little bit too much for Michigan State. Hudson was huge. It gave him a four-point cushion, and they worked the ball around. Launch time. Bell hits it. 94-83. Michigan State is aware they come off that loss to Illinois Tuesday and rebound with a victory. Iowa Northwestern tied at 41. The Wildcats try to snap a 32-game regular season Big Ten losing streak. Hard to the hole they go and things look good. Bill Carmody's defense really made a difference. Iowa shoots only 35% from the field in the game. Northwestern hits the big shots at the end, 49-41, and then they pull away. They pull away, but when you look at what happens now to Iowa without Lou Wrecker, they lose to Ohio State at home, they lose this from today. They gotta go to Michigan, Michigan State this week. Iowa could be fading in the Big Ten. Winston Blake leads him with 20 points. You saw two threes. Meantime, Wisconsin, Ohio State. Swing the ball around, three ball, good. Buckeyes at that point find themselves up 56, uh, down I should say 56-53. Wisconsin hit only one shot in the last four minutes. They do the rest with two free throws. 58-56, now Ohio State by two. Last second shot, oh, Versha also took a shot late and it was unable to go, so Ohio State. Three and 17, Eastern Michigan by only a point. Most likely it was Brandon Hunter, and why not? The guy can talk the talk because he definitely walks the walk. Early first half today, Brandon finding Patrick Flomo for a pair. Iowa up 10 to 9. 
How about some slow-mo defense? The theft, then the give to Hunter. Hunter all the way down. Easy rim bendery in a game high 29 and nine boards. We'll more on him in a moment. 38 seconds before the break, CJ Graham. Gorgeous spin move. Alley-oop to Ryan Perlman. Ohio leads 39-38 at the break. Second half, all Ohio. Open up on a 17-6 run. Slow-mo of flow-mo. And then Anthony Jones giving the fine China down low to Hunter to give him an eight-point lead. They would not look back. Larry Hunter opening the bench in the end. Jason Crawford around everyone for the scoop. And then Crawford making the most of his minutes, going all the way and throwing it down. Ohio wins it 94 to 68. Now back to Hunter. He's now had double figure scoring in 18 games this year, seven of them for 20 and more, including today, two straight. One more thing with his nine rebounds, he now is 205 on the season. The second straight 200 plus boarding year for him at Ohio. Ohio 8 and 1 at home, five of those wins by double figures as they jump to 13 and 8 on the season. Next up, Bowling Green and Buffalo. Falcons trying to get to the 500 mark, extend the win streak to four. Buffalo just 2 and 18. Trent Jackson, the big time three. Bowling Green up eight later in the first half. Jackson for the big time dunk. Bowling Green up 18 8. Second half, six minutes left. Buffalo just trying to get back. It's not going to happen, though. They pull within 19 here on that steal. Late in the second half, Bowling Green will work it around again. This time, Keith McLeod hits the three. Bowling Green, no problems. An 18 point win as they win it 70 to 52 with the win. Coach Dan Dakich is now a perfect 6 0 against Buffalo. McLeod leading the way with 20 points. Mac East Player of the Week, Len Matella, another good game, 17 points. Falcons now at the 500 mark. They are 10 and 10. Showdown time of the MCC. Cleveland State trying to move a step closer to the regular season title. Not bad. The Vikings picked to finish fifth in a preseason poll. Coming into this evening's game against Butler, Cleveland State was in first with a game lead over Detroit and a game and a half lead over Butler. Vikings on a seven game win streak. Head coach Rolly Massimino on a high after having his contract extended yesterday. Sixth largest crowd in Goodman Arena history. Butler out on a 9-0 run. Thomas Jackson, 15 points tonight. CSU coming back right here, 13-2 run. They take a 19-17 lead. Right before the half, Vikings' Jamal Harris from Cleveland Heights. Big-time three-pointer from Cedar Hill. CSU up at the half, 30-23. Second half, nice move by Cleveland State's Kevin Ross. Only problem is that CSU's only bucket in the first six and a half minutes of the half. Butler's Darnell Archie off the pick and roll for three. We're tied at 32. Seesaw until the final moments of the game. Just 2.7 to go, tied at 56. Brandon Miller, the three and the dance. Last chance, Theo Dixon from Cleveland Heights has a chance, but he can't score on the play. And CSU comes up short. They lose 59 to 56. So Cleveland Heights, Theo Dixon did it. Center Arizona putting on a dunk fest of their own. First half, Zona up 20. Richard Jefferson back door, throwing down the alley oop. Jefferson four for six from the floor. Dikembe Mutombo and Stephon Marbury liking it. Arizona up 22 at the break. Second half, Jason Gardner throws it up. Jefferson, two of his 10 points to go along with two boards. Steve Nash loves it. Later in the second, Lamont Frazier gets up for two of his seven points. Worth another gander. Well, nice finish by Frazier. Mutombo likes it. Arizona. The magic of television. I'm telling you, Arizona gets the victory. 86-51 is the final. WSU losers of eight straight as Arizona improves to their, or rather garners their 32nd straight win over the Cougars. Lauren Woods leading the charge. 18 points, six boards, five assists. And Battle Saturday, St. John's at Miami. Second half, Omar Cook misses and watch Darius Lane rebound. He inadvertently hits Cook with an elbow. Oh. Cook's lip was split. He would go into the locker room for five stitches in his upper lip. He missed more than seven minutes, but he did come back. 30 seconds left now. Red Storm down two. And look at Omar Cook. Stitch this. Tied at 63. They went to overtime. In double overtime now. St. John's down three. And guess who comes up with another big shot? Omar Cook for the tie. Even at 74. Next possession, Cook another deep three. Red Storm win. Cook 21 points, 12 assists. It's St. John's second overtime win this season. Late second half, UAB up one. Altron Jackson. 
will miss the runner, but Garrick Morris is there to clean up the mess. South Florida up one. Under 10 seconds to go. Bulls up one. Leandro Bass on the baseline for the victory, but he's denied by Sam Sanders. South Florida wins 61-60. Down one. Troy Murphy tips in the miss, but Notre Dame's Ryan Humphrey is called for a foul. Notre Dame up one or not. We'll watch it again as Murphy's going to tip the ball just as Humphrey grabs Calvin Bowman. The basket counts. Bowman would hit one of two free throws back at the other end to tie the game at 66. Later, West Virginia down one. Martin Inglesby with the steal. That led to two Notre Dame made free throws. 20 seconds left. West Virginia down three. Humphrey with a block. Josh Yeager with a chance. His three is up and not there. They get another chance. And it's Lyles for three. And that one is no good. And Notre Dame escapes 69-66. Even though Murphy scored just 15. Says Murphy, I didn't get the touches, but so what? The first four overtime game in Big 12 history. Since then, Iowa State has won seven straight. And Missouri's two high scores from that game are both out. Kareem Rush had 32 for the Tigers, but he broke his thumb last week. Clarence Gilbert scored 43 for Missouri. He's been suspended by Coach Quinn Snyder for disciplinary reasons. So Missouri shorthanded for the rematch against the Cyclones. And we have highlights of this. Brian Grower did some things. He did many things from the outside for three. Now Missouri down by eight more Grower. On the right side, he had eight threes in the game. Missouri down by five. Larry Eustachy of Iowa State, what do you have? He had 31 on us last year, and we can't get to him. How many threes is he at? Two? He's got six of Six points. He can't stay in the lane for over three seconds, or it's a violation. You've got to come in and execute. You've got to execute. you got to play some D. Brower, though, for free, right in front of you, Stacy. Cuts the Iowa State lead to two. Still first half, Jamal Tinsley. Jamal Tinsley's going to bang in a three, and Iowa State is up by four at the half. Iowa State came out hot in the second half. It's Jake Sullivan, the fallaway jumper. He had 13. That puts Iowa State up by 12. And now the Cyclones are up by nine. It's Tinsley to Martin Renzik for the kaboom. And Iowa State goes on to win by the count of 72-64. Ranzik 23. Tinsley scoring eight of his 18 in the final 4-17. So the Tigers missing Rush and Gilbert. The two account for 49% of Missouri's points. Iowa State has now won eight in a row. They lead the Big 12 by half game over Kansas. How about Virginia and Georgia Tech win the first half? Tony Akins, length of the court. Tough to stop. Nice move there, up and good. And he had 19 in the game. Still in the first half. Tech up 21-16. Aikens to Halston Lane. And Georgia Tech is up 27-23 at the half. Second half, Virginia coming back. Donald Hand on the break to Adam Hall. Up to Virginia up for the first time at 30-29. Late second half, though, Tech up one. Aikens. The Lane, who had 15, and Georgia Tech wins at 62-56. Yellow Jackets beat their fourth-ranked opponent this season. Tech now tied for third in the conference, while Virginia drops to 1-5 and five on the road in conference play. Hi, Jason Williams. The Duke says you got to live every day like it's your last now, and the 91 National Championship team was honored at the half. They were then impressed with what they saw, not from NC State who shot 45% for the game. They were impressed with Shane Battier. Solid two-way game. Nate James forces a turnover. The ball goes to Jason Williams. Eight assists. Battier. What are you doing? Launching a three and nailing it. He had 18. Four of nine from out there. Then Battier shows why he is Mr. D. Taking a charge. 24 turnovers for the Wolfpack. Only 11 in the game for Duke. Second half, Dale Rowland. Williams, sweet. He also had 23. Nate James had 19. By the end, Hurley, Leighton were begging again, and every starter hit for double figures. Team shoots 53%. They hit 11 of their first 12. Do you base tonight's game on their first meeting, a 22-point Kent State win at home, or do you go with the fact that Marshall is unbeaten on its home court, and then there's the fact that ever since Marshall joined the MAC, the home team has won all seven meetings, period, in this series. This is where you get that cliche about playing the game, and that's why they play it. Henderson center, we go. Second half action, Kareem Massey, and that's some punctuation off the steal. Golden flashes up one, not for long. 
And Marshall returns the favor. Travis Young coast to coast with his steal. Marshall up two, 350 left. The seesaw continues. Trevor Huffman super size it on the triple. Kent State up one. One minute left in regulation. Marshall down two with possession. Latisse Williams working down low. And folks, we're tied at 53, and they are going overtime. And Marshall jumps out ahead in the extra period. J.R. Van Hoos, he drops it in for two, and the lead is two for the Thundering Herd. 61-59, Kent State not laying down. Trevor Huffman one-handed, and Kent State up 65-63. Five seconds left, can Marshall tie it? Travis Young glances off on the three, one of several chances at the end, and 68-65 is your final. The conference record now for Kent State, nine and three, and Kent State now a game ahead of Ohio in the Mac East with Marshall a game and a half back.